Juanita's back with us to talk about nematodes in the garden. So Juanita, just what is a nematode? Well, a nematode is not a toad. It is actually a microscopic roundworm, or at least they're usually microscopic. You cannot see them. You usually only see the damage that they do. Okay, so, how, so this damage that I have, where do I find it? Well, it, can, it affects all kinds of plants. Um, you may notice it in your lawn as patches that are, getting, that are brown are getting larger and larger. You may just notice that your plants need to be irrigated. They seem to be wilting frequently and they have to be irrigated a lot more frequently. Or they just aren't growing well or they're kind of stunted. Because the nematodes attack the roots, or at least most nematodes attack roots. Most of the bad nematodes, I have to say, because there are good ones oh, as so well. good <laughs> ones and bad ones, okay. The bad ones usually attack the roots, and they may cause either um, stunted stubby roots, or they may cause knots on the roots, um, but they affect the roots so that the roots don't take up water and nutrients like they're supposed to. And then the top of the plant, you notice those kind of changes, and they're not, not responding to fertilizer, not responding to water. What's wrong with your plants? So it must be sometimes fairly hard to figure out if you have them, whether or not you've watered them, if you have some kind of disease, yes. things like that. It's really easy to confuse them. And you really can't tell on your own. You may, you know, if you have the type of nematode that causes root knot, you mm -hmm. may notice these knots on the roots, although there are natural formations on roots that kind of look like that. The really the only way to tell is to take a sample of the roots and the soil right around the roots and send it in to the uh, A laboratory for an analysis, a nematode analysis. So what are some of the plants that naturally have n not looking things on them, like well, legumes, like uh, bean plants? Yeah, bean plants, um, a podocarpus. A lot of people bring in okay. podocarpus because they have these natural nodules on the roots. But those are natural, so but you really have to take a sample into a lab. And University of Florida has a lab. Um, you can take a sample into your master gardener clinic and they'll give you the forms. They're also available online from solutionsforyourlife.com. Great. So you said that they do affect other things besides the roots. Um, there are some that, that, are, that are foliar nematodes. Mm -hmm. They're much more rare. You may find them in some ferns. But uh, commonly, you know, they're a real problem on, on vegetable plants and some ornamentals. Um, uh, certain ornamentals are more susceptible than others. And the best way to get around nematodes, really, is to use resistant varieties. But you don't always have resistance. <laughs> And you said they affect the lawn as well. Is there one type of grass that's more susceptible, or are they all just as susceptible? They're pretty much all susceptible. Bahia grass is a little less susceptible. But any plant, if it's slightly stressed, um, is much more susceptible to, to nematodes as and well. And diseases in general. Yes. Correct? Yes. All right. So you mentioned good nematodes. Yes. So what's a good nematode? There are actually good nematodes that are used to um, kill fungus gnats in greenhouses. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that are used to kill mole crickets, which are an insect pest in a lot of turf grasses. Um, and that same kind of uh, nematode will actually kill cockroaches, too. So there are some that are being developed as biological control agents. Are these something that are available to homeowners? Probably not. <laughs> so I know mole crickets are big and nasty things, and it would be nice to get rid of them easily. So I guess stick to the appropriate pesticide for your mold. Well, crickets. yeah, and you may be able to get that kind of uh, n nematode. And more and more, the biological controls are becoming more available. Great. So you mentioned, you know, we'll get back to the bad nematodes. <laughs> so I have them, and I've t sent my sample off to the university and figured out that, yes, I have that. What's my next step? Well, <laughs> it, as a homeowner, it's very difficult because we don't really have any commercially available treatments. Uh, like In the past, fumigation was used. Mm -hmm. Homeowners usually couldn't fumigate. And even now, growers can't fumigate with a lot of the chemicals, methyl bromides being outlawed or, or banned because of its effect on the, the ozone layer. Um, so there's a reduced number of options. Um, Probably the best is to try to use those resistant plants and varieties and, and avoid getting nematodes into your yard. If you mm -hmm. bring in a new plant mm -hmm. that has nematodes, uh, it's going to spread. How do I know if they're a resistant variety? Can I uh, ask at my garden center? You probably have to look online. Oh, okay. Solutionsforyourlife.com will have some information about resistant varieties. Sometimes they'll provide that kind of information when you buy the plant. Also on but, seed packets, do they have that information if I'm going to grow something from yeah, seeds? I don't know. They may have that on, uh, on, on seed packets. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll, they'll um, uh, claim 
that they're nematode resistant, but it really depends on the type of nematodes. We have all different types well, of nematodes. In Florida, we got yes, everything. Yes, yes. And even your weeds can host certain nematodes, so you, know, you may have a problem there. Aren't as I remember, tomatoes are pretty susceptible to nematodes, yes. correct? Yes, tomatoes are as well, and there are some uh, resistant varieties. Mm -hmm. But right now, if you, if you want to make sure that you avoid nematodes, mm -hmm. um, then if you find that you do have nematodes or you want to try to avoid them in, in your cultural practices, adding organic matter to your soil, as much organic matter as possible. Nematodes like sandy soil, lots of air, and, and uh, they move around in the, in the uh, microscopic film of water oh, on, the, okay. on the sand particles, so they like sandy soils. Add as much organic matter as you can. Um, a lot of people ask about solarization. Mm -hmm. Solarization is where you have freshly tilled soil, mm -hmm. it's kind of moist, and then you put clear plastic down over it and the sunlight coming down you know, heats it up and, and causes it to, to heat up and kill nematodes. How long do you have to keep it covered? Well, th that depends on the temperatures and if, it, if you're getting cloudy afternoons and rain every afternoon, it's not going to get hot enough to kill. And so solarization doesn't always work all that well. Sometimes solarization used in combination with a cover crop. Cover crops like uh, mustard or sorghum or even marigolds, mm -hmm. um, as they decompose, they actually release these gases that are toxic to nematodes. So if you can grow a crop of those and then um, kill them back and cover that over with the pl clear plastic, as they decompose, they'll release toxic gases like fumigation. Mm -hmm. It's a natural so for source of fumigation that can kill them off. Um, yeah. And you can usually get like sorghum seeds at like your local farm, yes. farm store. Yes, right? farm store, feed store would be uh, available, mm -hmm. yes. Um, you know, inspect the roots of plants as you're planting them. Um, if, you, if you really have problems in your garden, you can grow things in pots. Just don't let the, the soil and the pots come in contact with your soil. And as long as you get good fresh potting mix uh, in your pots, then you can grow them nematode-free that way too. Okay, so make sure that you're using fresh clean compost and things like that and well if compost can take nematodes as well but if it's composted properly, properly. so that it heats up mm -hmm. that kills the nematodes okay. let's see anything else that you can think of any other good way so we have solarization as the main way solarization cover crops mm -hmm. some people will just put the you know plant the cover crops crop rotation mm -hmm. if you um, send it a sample and find out what type of nematodes that you have because mm -hmm. when they do that analysis they don't just count them and tell you what type then there are certain cover crops that will help with specific types, oh, okay. and you have to look that up. Um, there are new types of biological control they're working on. There are some new fung fungi and um, other um, biological controls that they're producing, mostly just for commercial turf right now. But uh, in future, I think we'll have some biological controls that will work. Well, great. So over time, we can look forward to some new and better ways. But for now, rotate our crops. Organic Set matter. matter. <laughs> and solarization. That's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> and try to buy those resistant plants. Yes. Great.